importance of contextualizing our story by assembling our truth. So I want to start with a deceptively simple question, which is how many truths are there? Hold up your fingers. How many? One? A thousand? Infinite? So, you know, it's interesting to consider. If I took you out in the hallway and we went for a ten-minute walk, and um, uh, I asked you to write the story of that walk, and we came back, would they be the same? But they're the same relative time, place, and experience, so why would our stories be different? I do this with my students, I call it the perspective walk, and I think it's a, a, a great way to kind of enter in this conversation about relative versus ultimate truths. So one of my students answered the question at the beginning, he said there's one truth, it exists independently of us, and we may or may not be aware of it. I think that's a really good answer. Um, it kind of sets up the idea that we all have a tiny piece of the truth, a tiny relative truth, and when we start assembling those, we get closer to the whole thing, which we can never get there. So there's something I call the perspective truth. So there we all are on the outside, right, with our relative truths. And the more that we can bring together, the closer we get to the whole truth. But we can't ever quite get there. So I'm sure you've all said this, you probably believe this. Um, we as, as teachers should share our stories, right? Do you agree with that? Yes. What about with our students? We need to have them contribute to the narrative. I agree, okay? On the flip side of that coin, though, we often say um, we need to listen to the stories of others, right? Do you agree with that sentence? That's the sentiment? Yes. Yes. Okay? I agree with it, too. We need to listen to the stories, but too often, I think we're doing one or the other. We're telling the stories without listening, or we're listening to stories without speaking up, right? So the two don't really um, have the full power until we bring them into context, and until we bring them in, into conversation. It's not just telling the stories. It's not just listening. It's about bringing those together and seeing how they, they come to bear on each other. And when we do that, then we can start asking some really important questions. Um, where do we overlap? Where do we intersect? How are we different? Maybe more importantly, why are we different? And then maybe most importantly of all, um, how are we the same? Okay, so as uh, other speakers have referenced, we're all kind of going through um, an election fallout right here. And a big part of that is because folks on all sides of the fence aren't feeling heard, right? Um, but the thing is, I turn on the news, and spin is not story, shouting at one another is not debate, polarized debates, that's not contextualizing story, right? So the question becomes, how do we do this? How do we tell these stories and contextualize it? Well, right here's a space, NCTE, here's some um, pictures from our middle-level uh, meetup the other day. There's Ontario Garcia and Lori Hall Sanders in the bottom corner, um, talking, having a great conversation. Ontario says we have to have these conversations in our classroom. And one of the ways that we can do that as English teachers is through literature. And the reason I think literature is a better space than something like um, um, news is because it takes thoughtful time to write a piece, to read a piece, to respond to a piece. So we can still be timely, but we can have um, time for reflection, a time to pause. We can add to the conversation now, a year from now, 10 years from now, and it can unfold through literature. So our job is to put these books, stories, essays, poems, films together and ask what do they teach us about ourselves and others, right? So a couple examples. I don't know if you've seen this film. 2007. Check it out. It's making a run on HBO again. Great independent film um, that shows an unlikely friendship between an old, boring white professor and a, a Syrian um, immigrant, which has renewed importance today. Really great for empathy. Hiroshima is a, a classic example. Six Japanese civilian perspectives after the atomic bombing of um, Japan. Put that together with what we already know about the wartime stories. Really amazing assemblance of um, relative truths. I'm sure you're familiar with Krakow, right? Into thin air. So he wrote, writes this book, and Anatoly Bukharin um, doesn't like the way it's portrayed. So he writes his own book a year later. And both books were assembled to create the recent big uh, blockbuster hit, um, Everest. So it's really interesting to see how when we curate great literature around the same or similar stories, how we can see this complexity of our relative truths and how difficult it is to get to that ultimate truth and kind of the different overlapping factors. Even when we start taking a story and transforming it through genre, so here's something I call the narrative nonfiction spiral. So uh, when something starts as an article, which gets transformed into a book, which gets adapted into a film, this is really interesting. This is Crack Hours Into Thin Air, Into the Wild, uh, Michael Lewis, The Blind Side, and The Big Short. This is the process that it followed. So when we ask students to explore that text set and say what happens when we transform from article to book to film, really important conversations, and when we bring our own stories into that conversation, um, even more important, right? So um, uh, one last personal example is these two books that made me, as a white American male, realize that the same guys that chase these women out of their respective countries, thats those are the people that um, folks label terrorists, right? Our enemies and their enemies are the same. So when they come here and they get villainized, 
You know, what's, what's that about? It was those books that taught me that. So yes, we must tell our stories. We must listen to the stories of others. But both of those fall short unless there's a conversation around all those stories. If you'll permit me a, a brief commercial from my last slide. This is my first book. And if you like these ideas, it's a 